Good morning, everybody. So, I'll start with a story. When I was on my internship, I happened to go to Nyeri County. And uh, in that facility, I was the first ever pharmacist to be posted for internship. They had never received a pharmacist in town uh, because I think it was a level three facility. And uh, I kept asking myself why, as a pharmacist, I was posted in a level three facility, yet I know that's not a learning inst uh, institution that I would uh, amass or be able to practice what I when I learned in campus. But uh, that not being the case, there is a very interesting encounter I had which really turned around the way I see the society and specifically mental health uh, issues in our society. So there was this day I was uh, left alone in the dispensing area, that is the uh, outpatient pharmacy. And uh, a particular guy, I'll call him Mwangi in this case, came and he needed a prescription to be filled uh, for a term, for those who know a term. And so I gave him a dose for 30 days and I knew he would be able to comply with that and take it religiously. So the next day he came back, he said um, he, has, he had exhausted uh, the dose for 30 days. And uh, being a strict and good pharmacist, I said um, I practice by ethics, I know what is right and what is wrong. I'm trained to adhere to beneficence and non-maleficence. So I told him, I'm not going to dispense this dose today because um, it does not go in line with my, uh, the dispensing principles that we've laid out. So being one that he is, he started having insults at me. So he became very violent, and thank God there was a barrier between the interaction phase between the uh, clients and the, the professional, so he could not be able to reach me. But uh, I can tell you for sure, the insults that uh, were hard at me, I could not stand it. So people stood and watched that uh, happening. It was like a movie. So um, nobody would dare uh, get close to him because he's known to be very violent in the society and uh, he's had been convicted of uh, criminal offences before so he was uh, considered a very dangerous person. And since I was the only pharmacist there, I felt so bad to an extent that uh, I just closed the window and went home. Uh, so I left people unattended and uh, since I could not discharge my mandate, I thought that was wise to do. So getting home two hours later, I received a call from the pharmacy, a pharmacist in charge, she was not around. And uh, so she asks, where are you? And uh, why is the pharmacy closed at this hour? It was around midday. So I told her, I cannot work in such an environment where somebody comes and insults me for doing the right thing and uh, nobody is taking action. The security were there, but they could not do anything. So I refused to go back to work, so they had to get somebody to uh, attend to the rest of the patients. So the next day I'm driving to work, I am stopped on the way by the same guy, and he's like, Dr. Ali, how are you? I'm really sorry for what happened yesterday, and uh, uh, that was not my intention. Of course, I was very angry and I could not take that. I drove off and went to hospital uh, for my routine shift. So I meet the pharmacist and uh, she tells me Monkey was here and he's very remorseful about what happened yesterday. But you know, I'm a human being so it doesn't, forgiveness doesn't come that easy because it was really bad. That got me thinking um, afterwards, because for a person to behave in a particular manner, there has to be some causes that have led to this. And um, in, the, in the course of thinking, I decided to do some background research around mental health situations in Kenya, or cases in Kenya. And I came to realize that 
probably mismatch between the professional and the patients could be a, a contributing factor, significant contributing factor to mental health conditions in Kenya. And in retrospect, when I looked at this case, I realized that the day when he came and the prescription was filled for a term, was a there was a different consultant. So the next day he came back, a different consultant was there and did the same thing. I wrote another prescription for a term. And um, again, I noticed that this patient was, or this client was just on medication and there was nobody giving him an extra attention or support uh, to be able to overcome the challenges that he was facing. And uh, that really uh, got into me and at, at that point I started, you know, uh, forgiving him to some extent. So I went ahead and looked for him and we had a conversation, a significant conversation over lunch. Um, I realized some of the issues that he has are not just a mismatch between professional and the clients, but rather they stay away from home. Today we were having a conversation, the speaker that came before was talking about um, stigma, was talking about traumas that arise from home and the lack of attention to mental health issues. These are typical scenarios that we see in our society, um, in our areas of practice, in our schools, and well, in our streets. Well, we would want to redefine them and say, what is mental health for youth and how does it look for the youth? And you want to go further and think who is a youth, or who is a young person, or who is a young healthcare professional. And we look at this in terms of the age and the experience in the healthcare field. So there are significant causes, there are so many causes that contribute to the occurrence of mental health, especially among the healthcare professionals. And uh, number one, it could be workload, heavy workload. And this happens mostly on interns. So you're going for internship and everybody feels relieved because um, there's a help at hand. So you end up working throughout all the shifts or most of the shifts. So the shifts are long and they are weighing down on you and you cannot really control it because you have to report to work. There's also a lack of physical and uh, psychological safety or support. So you express concern that you're feeling this type of way. You talk to somebody and they tell you probably you're mad or you're bewitched or you're just broke. Those are some of the things they associate with men, uh, people who complain or who raise concern that they have a mental health concern, they need help. And uh, we end up, you know, ignoring them. And what happens later on um, is somebody trying to or choosing to die by suicide. We call it choosing to die by suicide and not committing suicide in the current definition. The aspect of moral conflict, especially among healthcare workers, is a very common phenomenon uh, where you are meant to choose between uh, prior or prioritize between different healthcare needs. So. In the COVID era, we saw instances where a patient comes, uh, you have to choose between putting one on oxygen and leaving the other. What happens later on big human being is that that case will keep haunting your mind and you want to you know, reflect on it because you feel you probably have done something wrong. And again, as healthcare workers, you know, we are trained to promote uh, beneficence and malfeasance. The aspect of perceived job security is also a significant concern uh, that contributes to occurrence of mental health, especially among young healthcare professionals. So imagine you're done with internship and uh, you've, maybe you're lucky to have saved a few coins to survive on for the next six months. But again, after exhausting the savings that you have, you don't have an opportunity to earn even more. So you're jobless. You went to school for five or six years, but you're here. You don't have a job. You try long terms, but they're really, you know, you're working for 13 hours a day, uh, six days a week. And you realize that that is not healthy for you. It will contribute to occurrence of burnout. Um, Work-related bullying. This happens a lot to young healthcare workers. Uh, you're told you're being given experience. 
you know, and nobody is willing to compensate you appropriately or commensurate to the effort that you're putting in. That is also a significant contributor to occurrence of mental health issues. So essentially, what these courses do is they result into burnout, depression, anxiety, sleeping disorders, among other things. I'm sure all of us, or some of us, have had some of these experiences. And uh, probably we want to just ignore them, or even if we seek help, uh, the society still has very prejudicial thinking around it. So how, as healthcare workers, do we go ahead and try to resolve some of these things? Self-care is very important, and um, healthcare, healthcare workers are encouraged to try as much as possible to practice this. Self-care involves being self-aware of who you are, what are your likes, what are your dislikes, what are your preferences in life, and such things. Self-compassion, so, you worked for 13 hours, you're gone home, and you want to take your laptop again and continue working or looking online to do one or two things. That introduces an aspect of lack of self-compassion. You need to have some pity on yourself because the body, as you pressure your body, it needs a time when it's able to rejuvenate or re-energize. Um, the other thing is strategies around psychological or social self-care. So we need to, we are social beings, as human beings we are social beings, we need to surround ourselves with the right people who are able to work with us, journey with us and support us through uh, the different challenges that we, go, we have. The other thing is um, mood boosters and preventative measures towards mental health. So as a healthcare professional, you have achieved something good. So what do people tell you? Do they tell you that is your job? you've uh, helped a patient recover completely. So what are people telling you? Do they come to you and tell you you've done a good job or they just uh, look at it and say that is part of your job? Mood boosters could also be in terms of remuneration. You're working so hard, does it contribute or does it, is it commensurate to the effort that, the remuneration is it commensurate to the effort that you're putting into that work? Um, in most cases we try to you know, healthcare workers are put up at a position where they're considered to be heroes or invincible, invincible in that matter. And what happens in that case is that you tend to put yourself at a very lofty level where you feel that, um, and this is a common phenomenon where we think uh, diseases or conditions are for patients and we segregate ourselves from that and we end up suffering in return. So we need to improve or motivate healthcare workers, but at the same time, consider them as human beings. Peer-to-peer -peer support, among other things, are uh, other things we could consider in terms of mental health. So, in terms of interventions, what can we do in the current generation or era to improve mental health access? So, we are talking about technology, and nowadays there's an aspect of everybody's talking about artificial intelligence, uh, augmented reality and things like those ones. Healthcare technology is very important because it will help us to reach many people uh, while at the same time creating a, a, a bigger impact. We also need to uh, create forums where we spread awareness, we uh, destigmatize access to mental health services uh, so that uh, it becomes a normal part of conversation. I look forward to a day when we will be able to have a conversation when somebody tells you that they have an appointment with their therapist. You don't look at it as if this person has a problem or they are a weak person. And I think this happens mostly among the boys, the boy child. Somebody was talking about boy child empowerment. So if a man says, I'm going to a therapist, the first thing we want to look at it is, this is a weak person. So because they are students of Americans, they are known to be tough and they're supposed to fight it through. There are some things, there are some walls that you need to, you need help for you to fight. So, being a founder or being a pharmacist at Psychics, um, we advocate for equal access to mental health services and we're trying to use technology in order to enable access to mental health services to everybody. So, I, I invite all of us to engage 
to uh, create platforms or conversations around mental health so that everybody will be able to have a prosperous future. And as they say, there's no help without mental health. Thank you so much.